KUAM News, winner of the 2020 Regional Edward R. Murrow Award for Excellence in Social Media. Tokyo 21, presented locally by IT&E. Hafenay, Guam, and World, welcome to Weekend Edition. I'm Jason Salas. Thanks so much for streaming us or watching us tonight. The Mayor's Council of Guam has announced that Asin Maina Mayor Frankie Salas has tested positive for coronavirus. The municipal leader has self-quarantined and his office has been temporarily closed. Staffers are likewise under self-quarantine, while public health conducts contact tracing. We at KUAM wish the mayor, as well as his team, a speedy recovery. Elsewhere, a member of the advanced traveling team for the visiting U.S. Defense Secretary has tested positive for COVID-19. According to CNN, Dr. Mark Esper's office has said, quote, No one with the secretary has tested positive, and neither the secretary nor the traveling party have been exposed, end quote. The staffer reportedly was not in contact with Dr. Esper or his immediate traveling team. Esper supposed to tour local military bases and also meet with Japan's defense minister. Elsewhere, do not share a social media post or email message purporting that you'll either win cash or a Home Depot voucher of $175, so says the Marianas Regional Fusion Center, who's noted the widely circulated messages online. It's a phishing scam security experts are tracking, and they advise you not to recirculate it. You can report suspicious online scams like this to the center's website at mlrin.org. Well, in much more positive news about technology, GDOE will distribute technology to kids who wish to attend classes safely from home through distance learning. The agency will deploy about 8,000 computers from its inventory so that students may continue their studies through online classes. GDOE is working diligently to expand and improve distance learning the 8,000 computers will be deployed to students who would like to enroll in the online model of learning, but who may need access to equipment in order to do so. And also today, Mother Nature, it seems, is doing her part to help encourage Guamanians to stay home during this extended lockdown, sending torrential downpours and flash flooding, especially to Guam's southern villages. Here's some pictures that were DM'd to us from the Flores compound down in Inarahan, which is no stranger to this phenomenon, with kids making the most of the situation. Fortunately, they said, the interior of the home was kept dry. Right. Well, with the new semester over at the University of Guam and Minila now in full swing, several initiatives and programs are set to launch, giving students a well-rounded experience despite the COVID-19 pandemic. Our Jonah Gancharfras has tonight's top story. With all that is going on with COVID-19 and adjusting to the new norm, UOG has been focused on helping students with their financial challenges. UOG's CARES initiative is affording students the opportunity to attend college. UOG Dean of Enrollment and Student Success, Lawrence Camacho. In addition to the federal, uh, federal financial aid, the College Affordability Initiative is just a, a portfolio of various other financial assistance, job opportunities uh, that we have through our campus. Uh, scholarships and even grant opportunities that are designed to support students. Camacho says recently they awarded 10 last mile scholarships to students who are so close to completing the program of study and graduating and just needed that push and financial assistance. Shout out to the Endowment Foundation for just recently awarding uh, over what $76,000 in scholarships to benefit around 52 students this uh, this really shows how our alumni who are very happy coming back and continue to university and community benefactors continue to encourage higher education through their generous contributions. The staff and faculty at the Home of the Tritons is dedicated to ensuring student success, focusing on the student experience and the learning challenges that they may face, especially during this pandemic. We not only improved our services in the IT side, on the IT side uh, to accommodate the demands of the virtual learning platform, but we took advantage and exploited the opportunities that it presented. And as a result, we had search, for instance, our virtual advisement with online chats, uh, with Zoom advisement sessions for admissions, for registration, for all kinds of other assistance that our students, uh, both current and prospective students needed. Now, despite the challenges this pandemic brings, the university has a lot to be proud of and is excited for what lies ahead. If you would like more information, head over to uog.edu. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Jonah Gancharfras. Thanks, Joan. In other news tonight, 26-year-old Timothy Twice was arrested and charged with family violence as a misdemeanor. 
Around 2.50 in the morning on August the 23rd, the victim allowed twice to enter her hotel room. He then allegedly pushed the victim onto a couch, punched her, and began to stomp her. Twice allegedly continued to brutalize the victim as she tried to get away, punching her in the face and continuing to stomp on her. The woman was, called, was able to escape and call for help. Elsewhere tonight in crime news, 31-year-old Michael Robert has been arrested and charged with aggravated assault as a third-degree felony. He was drinking with a neighbor when he allegedly punched the neighbor. The neighbor punched Robert back, and then Robert allegedly stabbed the man in the thigh with an object. Upon the arrival of police, the neighbor had a bleeding open gash from the alleged event. Elsewhere, a 30-minute Senate Committee on Education virtual roundtable hearing centralized on the special education curriculum and how to move it forward through the pandemic. Spearheading GDOE's Special Education Task Force is Dr. Asher D. Rossetti, who says there is an existing gap that needs to be properly and effectively addressed. Between leadership and the community and stakeholders. So our main focus needs to be um, looking at what our community needs and what our students and their families need so we can bridge that gap. According to Dr. Rossetti, a gap they plan to fill is in relation to the one-to-one -one aid program. Superintendent of Public Education John Fernandez says the needed services are centered on capacity building internal to the agency. To track the concerns and issues that have, have been, you know, have come up over the years that we want to make sure that uh, even though we address those issues case by case, that any of those common th threads and issues that are available, we want to make sure that we weave them into our discussion uh, so that the, the solution makes sense. The task force is targeting it in October to make a final recommendation to the agency. During the virtual meeting, the committee also confirmed Dr. Monique Story's appointment to the board of the Guam Public Library System. Now, starting Monday, GDOE is launching a series of distance learning parent meetings. They'll be held via Zoom or Google Meet. According to a release from the agency, the purpose of these stakeholders' meetings is to provide an opportunity for the department's leadership to present more in-depth information on the distance learning models to parents in order to strengthen this teaching approach. Parents can ask questions, provide feedback on GDOE's online instruction models, and more. There will be seven in all distance learning meetings held for elementary and secondary families beginning in the southern region on August 31st through September 10th. Each meeting will be held at 5.30. For the schedule, you can check out KUM.com. And in business news tonight, young budding business minds prove that the challenging conditions of late have not dampened their entrepreneurial spirit. Junior Achievement held its award ceremony this week, recognizing the innovative ideas by student teams from 11 countries and territories across the Asia-Pacific region. Teams were honored with a variety of excellence awards, with Guam's own Pasiadot student-run company winning the coveted FedEx Global Possibilities Award. The top prize went to a student-run organization from Singapore. Congratulations to all of these amazing Young business people, you certainly have very bright futures ahead. Well, please stay tuned, friends, because coming up on Weekend Edition, Tyler Metanani has your trend spotting report, and we check in with Dave Delgado with Weekend Sports. Get up to the minute news, plus access to alerts, streaming radio, promotions, and more on your mobile device by downloading the KUAM News mobile app, available at the App Store now. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Cabo's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. It makes myself and it makes my team members very proud to work for an organization that has been on island for many years with its focus on reliability, dependability, and commitment to the communities that they operate in. Matson's a great corporate citizen to the community. We all benefit from any sort of environmental commitment we make. One of the ways that we do that is with our Adahi Utano program. 
there's action behind it. And so action breeds commitment. With the Kaimana Gila coming to Guam, this brings a new age and modernization to the island. It's exciting for me because it's a brand new ship and we can carry more freight into the island. It just shows growth for Guam and Micronesia. Matson would be nothing without its customers and we hope to continue to serve you for decades to come. We are wrapping up what is hopefully the worst week we'll have this year. Back-to-back -back deaths, hundreds of new COVID cases, and another week to lock this mess down. I'm Tata Matsunani, and here's your trend spotting report. In less than a week, COVID-19 again ravaged our island. Public health struggled to catch up with its backlog of tests after an overwhelming response by the community concerned of catching the virus. By Monday, 54 cases were reported while Guam had mourned the death of two residents just days before. It was a small relief also from the week before where we had experienced the highest number of COVID cases in one day, a painful 105. The governor had asked the island to shut down for two weeks and we were in the last stretch. For some island residents, however, that was too much to ask. On Tuesday, just a few dozen residents, including families and business owners, took to Tumon for a protest against Governor Lou Leon Guerrero's lockdown. The protesters, some who were seen not wearing their masks properly, argued the island shutdown was unjust. They alleged it punished businesses and violated their rights since the restrictions also meant they couldn't go outside and exercise at parks and beaches. Let's take a look at some of your thoughts on this issue. One Way 671 says, Lou is killing small businesses? Well, COVID is killing our people. Without the people, small business will die anyways. Stay home. Balamugunth1 adds, I feel like y'all are kind of being too mean. I get that Corona is bad and that we need the quarantine, but they all just seem like small independent business owners who are worried about their livelihoods. In their defense, the lockdown did just come out of nowhere and was a last minute decision. They probably didn't have time to prepare. And I guess Guam's still making them pay taxes and they can't really do that with no money coming in. They're out of work and aren't being properly compensated. They can't cope like large businesses can with this pandemic. There are people on our island who are worried about losing their jobs and lives. Yes, I agree that the quarantine is still good and necessary, but the issues they bring up are still issues that need to be dealt with. They can't just ignore the problem they bring up and shame them into silence. At least that's how I see it. Feel free to correct me if anything I said was wrong. S. Marie B underscore says, y'all wanted to open up the island, aka your businesses, and what happened again? Right. Our cases spiked, causing a second wave we thought wouldn't be likely because our cases started really low. Now some people can't even wear a mask correctly. Proves that some can't run their business correctly if they can't even follow simple rules. On Wednesday, more positive tests returning and a complaining public prompted a stern response from public health medical director, Dr. Jana Manglotnia. On KUAM's The Link, Dr. Manglotnia spoke without restraint to an island where many residents continue to ignore the safety measures meant to keep us safe. What you're seeing now, thank your community for it. We didn't do this. And we've done everything we can to equip our, our hospitals and equip our clinics and equip our providers and public service announcement. Pretty tired and pretty fed up working 24 hours a day trying to clean up these messes. And then people looking at us saying, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? What are you going to do? You did this. We didn't do this. You did this. Dr. Manglotnia's comments came just hours before the announcement of another tragedy, worse than expected. The governor gave the heartbreaking news over social media. Guam's eighth and ninth COVID-related deaths happening within five minutes of each other. The first was a 61-year-old man with underlying health conditions. The second casualty was a 62-year-old woman who was at the hospital for more than a month. The woman, however, spent much of her life at the hospital as a longtime ICU and ER nurse. The Guam Memorial Hospital was left to mourn their own as they battle the virus, overwhelming their facility. Guam closed the day with two more deaths under its belt, setting another case record at 136 new positive cases. 
We woke up the next day with another fire blazing on KUAM's The Link. It was no filter for Dr. Vince Akimoto, who went on an expletive latent rant on Dr. Jana Manglotnia. Akimoto questioned whether Manglotnia was a racist, saying she targeted those who have been following orders and sacrificing. And while the governor called COVID a bitch, Akimoto asserted Jana Manglotnia was the, well, let's not repeat that. The Lynx Sabrina and Chris took a deep breath and also responded to his claims. You know, I, I just want to say this because that was just really, un, for me, just uncalled for with uh, what Dr. Akimoto, the yeah. words he used to describe. Of course, uh, yeah. I, don't, I do not think that uh, racist? Dr. Manglutnia is a real? racist. And That's crazy. Honestly, if, You're crazy, if Vince. she's <laughs> a bitch, I'm a bitch. Yeah. Because if I'm that passionate about passionate about what I'm doing. I mean, she she has been putting in the work and I'm sure Dr. Akimoto has too, but she's come on the air. She's expressed her frustration. She's done the public service announcements. Everybody at public health working so hard, maybe some not so hard, but you know, just to call her a bitch, I'm a bitch too. Sabrina shared her thoughts. Now here are some of yours. On Instagram, underscore Kimmy underscore zero zero says, I have never seen Dr. Akimoto once go out there and assist with COVID. All he's done is run his mouth. From personal experiences, he's nothing but a sarcastic person. And for him to call Dr. Manglonia a bitch, it goes to show he has no professionalism at all. I'd like to see him do her work and let it be him to get our numbers to go down. Dr. Manglonia, I'm with you 100%. So Rages 66 added, bravo, you put the nails on the coffin. His statement reminds me of the computer language, gigo, garbage in, garbage out. Let's all pray that we get out of this pandemic the way we came in, healthy. Chris and Bree, keep up the good work, awesome crew. Evangeline M. Cepeda also says, So easy to speak when a woman is strong, smart, and speaks the truth. She didn't offend anyone, but because she is a woman, she's called out a bitch. How unprofessional and so not cool. You handle that very poorly and an insult to women. Wow, really? Really? While others applaud your foolish behavior, ask yourself this, doctor. If she was your mother, wife, or daughter, would you be offended? And lastly, Kiss a Bell Life says, wow, it has finally come to it. Doctors attacking other doctors. In my strongest opinion, Mangolnia said nothing wrong. The people and the community of Guam need to see the seriousness of this virus. The people are the reason why the virus is spreading. No matter if you are asymptomatic or positive, just stay home. That was just the triple shot of espresso for Thursday morning. Governor Lou Leon Guerrero was scheduled to announce later that she was going to extend the lockdown and public health emergency. She did just that, but not before announcing the island's 10th COVID-related death, the third this week. The victim was a 96-year-old woman who was dead on arrival at the hospital. The governor ordered another week of lockdown, although she relaxed some restrictions on businesses and park exercise use. But still, we close the day out setting another record. A reported 112 new positive virus cases pushed Guam's total cases over the 1,000 mark. This is deadly serious Guam. Go to work, get your groceries, go home. Wash your hands and keep your masks on. We have one more week on lockdown and it is our responsibility to each other and to our frontliners to slow this virus down. Until next week, I just... Guam's auto apparel specialist, Elegant Reflections, has been providing the automotive industry with professional detailing and car care products at its highest quality from complete detailing, full interior detailing, exterior detailing, headlamp restoration, hand washing, seat and carpet shampoo, engine degreasing, undercarriage cleaning, paint sealant, fabric protection, paint oxidation removal, and so much more. Visit us at our new location. Call 646-5555 for an appointment. Elegant Reflections, Guam's auto apparel specialist. Over 20 years of experience. No matter what size adventure you're into, it's better in a Hyundai. And introducing the venue, the newest member of the Hyundai SUV family. KUAM Sports is presented by Triple J.
What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. We're starting off the show tonight with Jimmy Yee, a uh, physical education teacher over at Father Joinius. And a uh, new school year, and teachers are trying to find new ways to keep the kids active and engage this school year. Yes, thanks for having me. I appreciate this time with you. Hope all is well. Can you talk about the ways that uh, you guys are trying to implement assignments, homework, and, and just keep uh, the kids active? Yeah, we're, we're all online, Google Classroom, and it's a definitely a new world, new, new ways to do things and um, connecting with the students online. And I personally like to see their face while we're talking instead of them having like their name on the screen. So uh, physical education wise, yeah, I send them some workouts to do. Um, I ask them to kind of like record it so I know they're actually doing it. You know, I have them use time lapse and then they kind of post it as their assignment. Uh, just to have them do some body workouts at home, do some exercises, nothing, nothing fancy, nothing crazy, just for them to at least break a sweat at home. And for you to, to be able to monitor them, and we talked about this, it's, it's about conversation and interaction with the students because some of them really look forward to coming to school and just sitting down and, and, and talking to, especially you, because not only are you a physical education teacher, but, but you're also a coach. Yes, I totally agree, man. So I, most of the time I'm, I'm talking to them. I'm talking to them a lot just to say, what's up? How's life? You know, check on them, you know, and, and then I'm just helping them. If, hey, if you need anything, you need to talk to someone, I'm free, you know, get a call or whatever. But yeah, uh, it's good. That's why I like the video just to see their faces, you know, just to interact because uh, most of our kids definitely would like to be at school face to face. And, and then one, they get to, you know, interact with each other, which is the key component we're missing right now, right? Because everything's online. So yeah, man, just to talk, just to chat. And then I share them videos. You know, we watch a video together during our Google Classroom time. And um, yeah, man, uh, it's just, just to talk, man. Kids, you know, just to chat, you know, it'd be surprising what, how much it could do. So I'm, I'm online three times a week with more kids. That's our schedule. So even just for a little bit, I mean, we just chat, man, just about life. And what about for assignments, homeworks, and just grading the students throughout the school year? Um, I post it online. Everything's done online, and I'll grade them. You know, um, obviously it's an elective. I, I do I do push them to make sure they focus on their core classes, make sure they get those work done. You know, and no pressure in our our elective class. You know, just do what you can and have fun while you're doing it. But yeah, we're interacting, man, as much as much as we can. All right, joining me now, a Stubo Middle School PE teacher, Gerard Jones. Uh, going into the second week of online classes, really trying to take things slowly this school year. Tell us about the things that you are slowly trying to introduce to the students and eventually get to uh, the kids back into the group. So since we started last week, we've actually just been sorting out, finalizing our rosters. Um, we've been trying to communicate with parents and our students, trying to call them, uh, email through emails to and even the google classroom that we use we we know that we're in the middle of a pandemic but uh like what you said we want to go slowly we don't want to overwhelm our students so this week we've been um sending surveys pretty much just to have an assessment or a gauge of what their physical activity was the past few months so um, that's what we've been doing uh, since we started. Now, after this, I plan to meet with the, my students uh, online, pretty much to discuss content objectives, uh, my expectations of them, even safety while working out at home. Um, from there, we're slowly going to introduce um, a workout program that we have developed wherein students can work out at home, work out at home, and um, does that, that does not take um, a lot of space and no equipments needed. So slowly, slowly introduce that. The plan is to send videos. Uh, and when possible, we wanna work out with them, with our students so we can motivate them. Now, <laughs> We, we, we think that PE probably is more important now than ever because, you know, with students coming back to online learning, they'll be in front of their laptops for hours, right? So 
So yeah, it's really important to check on them, making sure they're moving and, and trying and, and exercising. Joining the show, Doug Palmer, athletic director over at uh, UOG. Now, when we talk about collegiate athletes at the uh, university, how has coaches been able to monitor and, and stay in touch with uh, you know, these athletes that have to stay on top of their score? Most of the teams have their own WhatsApp chat rooms. Uh, that's how most of, the, of their communication is done. Um, so I think that's basically how the, the communication is going on right now. Um, and then I think a couple of things that we've had, you know, pretty big coaching changes. Uh, so I'm not sure if all of them are as organized as they need to be yet. Uh, I can tell you men's soccer is all very organized. They have 17 guys already, and they're ready to play today if they had to play. Um, but I'm not sure if the rest of our teams, we actually were planning on having tryouts this week here for all our sports. And uh, I, I, and the current situation has kind of put that on a, a long hold. So uh, it, it's going to be something very, uh, we're going to have to find some athletes at the university probably to fill out all our teams right now. And when it comes to recruiting, especially at the local level, uh, how challenging can that be not having uh, seen the kids in action or just, you know, making sure that they're doing what they need to do to get to the next level? Yes. Well, I think three out of four of our teams are in pretty good shape since women's basketball, men's and women's soccer have local folks who've been here all their lives and they know the soccer scene, they know the women's basketball scene, and they know the folks who are, who are good in the community so I don't think that would affect them. Men's basketball with uh, Dana Holmes, who's an off island person, who's who's uh, came into the uh, to the island in the past two years. He might have a little more difficulty. Uh, just probably really depends on how much high school basketball he got out to see last year. But I'm pretty confident most of the folks here can, you know, who know who the good players are and can go out and and recruit them. Uh, so I, I don't really have a whole lot of uh, uh, negative feeling that, that we can't find athletes and, and bring those athletes in since most of our coaches uh, have been really involved from youth level on up uh, for, for players. So I, I feel very confident that, that we can still bring in players. All right, get ready. It's time for your weekend birthday shoutouts. Weekend birthday shoutouts go like this on Saturday the 29th. Happy birthday to Milan James Malthus Ablon. Happy birthday to my beloved son, wishing you a blessed fifth birthday. This comes with lots of love from mommy, grandma, nana, uncles, aunties, and also from your familia Nauta. Congratulations, Nauta family, and happy birthday, Milan. Happy fifth. Florida Lisa Vagos, happy birthday number 81 to my beloved mother from her loving family, Faye, Joshua, Robin, and Joaquin. Happy birthday. And Ed Matabusa, and you are a wonderful person. We hope that your special day is the beginning of yet another amazing year. We love you, in other days, and appreciate you. From Percy, Nay, Zach, Denya, and the grandkids. And on Sunday the 30th, Reef Daniel, happy birthday number one to our super chunk, Love mom, dad, and your familia. Happy birthday to Devin Jerome Santos. Someone's turning eight, and that's just great. That's a nice poem, guys. Happy eighth birthday, Devin. Eight wonderful years of being awesome. Love Zane, Zariah, Nino Jake, and Nina Bell. And happy birthday number 18 to Kevin John Afison Blas from your Afison, Navarro, Roberto, and Blas families. That is a big roster of weekend birthday shout outs. We hope each and every one of you celebrate responsibly and safely. Do what's right for Guam. And happy birthday to each and every one. 
Admittance into the Cold Stone Crew Mirror Birthday Club is absolutely free and we want you because we want to make you happy while you're staying inside, getting your masks on, getting your gloves on, and being a responsible Guamanian. So go to KUM.com, click on birthdays, and send those in. Please everyone, stay safe. Let's all do the same thing. Let's practice social distancing, let's put on our safety equipment, and let's be good, responsible neighbors to each other. We can do this, and we will. Thanks so much for watching, and stay safe.